Good morning everyone, welcome to our community collaborative event, The Golden Bee. I'm Rachel from Echidna Sewing and today I have with me Margaret who's our beginners embroidery teacher and our local bee lady. Welcome Margaret. Thank you. Welcome to you all too, thanks for coming. We've got a small audience in store today and also great to see everyone online. So, <laughs> here we are. You're probably all wondering how on earth did Rachel come up with the idea to create a collaborative community project? Well, it all happened when I thought, how am I going to get everyone to stitch something so we can make a, use out the tools we've got in our sewing room and create something funky? And the golden bee came up. So um, the idea is that we create a big piece of embroidered wall art, but also highlight um, a charity. And this charity is Save the Bees or be the cure and I don't know if you can see this but on our website we have um, uh, this icon it says the golden bee and it is uh, the link through to all our demonstrations of what we're doing today and also some information on how you can contribute if you're in store you can um, give us a gold coin donation if you are um, online you can donate through um, the button that's on the website but Simon from um, Save the Bees or Be the Cure he is really into educating people on the um, Western Australian honeybee Margaret and the European honeybee European honeybee yes. and um, his mission is and I'm going to read it because I think it's really important their mission is to rehome mm. honeybee infestations to save them from extermination. So Rachel, how long is this project going to last? So this project is actually going for three months, so um, from March through till May, and um, in each month we are going to be uh, learning about different elements and using them to create this, um, this yeah, embroidered piece of art. And so if it's finishing in May, 
Did you know that May the 20th is World Bee Day? I did know that actually, Margaret, <laughs> and we have scheduled this to finish on World Bee Day. That's Who great. would have thought there was a World Bee Day, right? So that's about 12 weeks from the beginning of the project to the end of the project. And a bee only lives six weeks, so that's two generations of bees. And I was just uh, saying to Rachel yesterday that in their lifetime, they can make one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey. That's not a lot, is it? Oh, that's, now, that's not very much, actually. I'm going to savour my honey even more now. Radio. <coughs> Radio. Um, was there something else? Um, no, just random bee facts from you is really useful today. So you can expect this from Margaret, but also she's got a lot of embroidery knowledge as well. So you can, if, as I said, if you want to donate, click on the, um, click on the icon here and we will uh, you'll take you through the donation page. I'm going to explain a little bit more about how this is going to work because you're probably looking at this going, wow, that's a big picture. So I have already um, projected and drawn the bee image onto this 100% cotton piece of fabric. If you want to make your own at home, you can. The A4 image is on the website, and so you can use that to make a larger one if you want to. But the idea is that we make the elements. So this week, sorry, this month, we're making freestanding lace. And my vision is we're going to use the lace. I'm just going to poke these in here. Obviously, it, they'll be stitched on. My vision is to use the lace designs to create the wings. We've got the, um, the flowers, so we're making three-dimensional flowers today as well, and they are going to be the wreath around the flower because bees need flowers, right, Margaret? That's You've got a, right. Some pollen. About two million to make a half a kilo. Two million flowers. Two million, that's a lot of flowers. To make a half a kilo of honey. Who's counting? We should plant more flowers. And, right. and weeds, clover apparently. Is Lavender, really basil, all your herbs, that kind of thing. Grevillea. Yep. Yep. So some Australian Great. natives. Sage. Plant more flowers. My bee anatomy is pretty good. I had to study this. So the head, thorax and abdomen, they are going to be made up of hexagons and um, quilted fabric for the black stripes. And It's in in interesting that you mentioned the hexagons. And mm. just, um, just letting you know, uh, so brought along this, um, the foundation for this frame that's ready to go into um, a box. And my husband just took this one out of a, a hive yesterday. So it's not, it's not fully capped yet. So you, there's honey in all of the hexa hexagonal cells. There so I can we hold are. this up under yes, the, I can, can see. Yes, I can just hold that up. So here we've got the cells that have been capped, and here are the uncapped, but they have got honey in. And the hexagon is the most efficient shape in the world. So it's strong, and the, the reason it's the most efficient is its perimeter takes up the least area. So that's our honey in the making, and the beekeeper only robs what the bees don't need. But you mentioned hexagons on your bee, didn't you? I did, and because they're the strongest shape, this is going to be form the sum of the body. But you also said to me, yes, I had a young lady at my house who's uh, an apprentice beekeeper, and I said to her, Ebony, give me an interesting bee fact that you've learned. Um, she's 24, and she's a teacher, by the way. She's not a child, not a little kitty. And she said, Ah. Oh, Bees carry pollen on their back legs. And I believe you're going to put some hexagons down yeah. there. We'll put some hexes have some on the legs. Pollen in there. Which are pollen. Yeah. So that will be um, in our next demonstration next month. So this month we're going to be focusing on freestanding lace. But you can, um, I don't know, maybe you can all see how this will evolve as a big piece of, I want to call it stitched and cut art because we're going to encourage you guys to use all the tools you've got in your room to help me make make this which is how I can get you involved so we've got some free designs on the website so the maybe just yes hold I was just to going to camera. get that yes if you go to this link under demonstration one there's a free free a free free standing lace design plus the um, three-dimensional rose design which you can uh, which you'll be able to stitch out as well. So if you want to try your hand at making those, if you've never tried freestanding lace or making a three-dimensional flower, happy for you to make one and send one, send them to us at um, Capalaba if you aren't in store or near an echidna store, or um, drop them in if you, these, our lovely audience can uh, just drop them into to us if you'd like to make um, 
uh, the rose design would be great. And then the, the, that will add to all the wreath and the body of the bee. If you don't, I'm going to be doing a lot of stitching and I'm probably going to rope the bee lady in as well. <laughs> Not again. I think it's going to look absolutely fabulous. I can just imagine it. It's going to be a riot of colour and, of course, such an important project. Absolutely. So, Margaret, I know you've made a bit of freestanding lace in your time. Yes. What do you use to be successful with your lace? Well, there's a couple of products and I can see we've got uh, most of them. They're, they're all on the table here. The first one I use is um, Wash Away. And I use a double layer of wash away. Now, just as the name suggests, this stabilizer will wash away in water. Okay, so we do have uh, the roll here for us. The next thing for my hoop, because, it, because we're only hooping a stabilizer and no fabric, it's very, very thin. So uh, on the outer edge of the inner hoop, so that's the outer edge of the inner hoop. This is a uh, really great tip. Yes, it's, it's a lovely little yeah. um, saying to, to memorise on the outer edge of the inner hoop. I'm going to put double layer, um, double sided sticky tape all the way around there. Then when I place my stabiliser in the hoop, lay that on. Now I've just slackened it off slightly so that I, I'm not going to be using too much force. Pop that in there, press it in. Tighten it up and then just make sure that your stabilizer is as taut as possible. No wrinkles at all. So this is one time when you can stretch and then make sure your hoop is nice and tight. And okay. you can stretch it, Margaret, because yes. it's a wash away, right? Yes. So it'll wash away in the end. That's be nothing right. Left. That'll be lovely. Yeah. Now, when it comes to threads, um, for some projects, you might want to just use your Hemingworth thread in the top and in the bottom. Now you don't need a special kind of thread in the in the bottom. You don't need to buy a bobbin feel. You can use your Hemingworth top and bottom for that. But also there are other threads that you can use. And Rachel, you've used some different threads I on have. your project, haven't you? Yeah, I've created some smaller elements um, that Margaret will hold up and show you. These are I'm probably going to be gap fillers when I do the um, lace wings, but I've used um, a metallic thread, I've used some different tones, but I've also used the soft light cotton, which I uh, yeah. gives you a matte finish, but I find it's a really nice uh, thread for stitching out freestanding lace. But like anything, experiment, see what you oh. like. And of course, not only can you use different threads, but Oh, you hang can... on Margaret, uh, we need to just talk about this design because we have uh, to stitch some of it. Radio. So the freestanding lace design that we're giving to you is 36 minutes long. And we decided you probably didn't want to sit here while it was stitching for 36 minutes. So I had already pre-stitched a whole bunch of it. So I've got to just start this and stitch out the um, last couple of minutes for you. And then Margaret's going to um, talk about some of the other elements that we use when creating, uh, well, your options for creating freestanding lace. So, um, this very pretty design this has got opal film as a background, so you, c you would just put it onto your wash away, put your opal film down and stitch your design. When I have my opal film in the hoop, I do use my paintbrush, dry of course, and uh, I keep the film nice and flat so that it's, it's not going to wrinkle up at all, okay? Um, that if you use a yellow thread, you seem to get a yellow look. The, the film seems to take on the color of the thread that you're using. And I see that we've got a pink here. And so if you stitched out pink, the whole thing would have this pink hue about it. So we've got a couple of different varieties of film that you can use. You might have heard it called mylar in other situations, but this one is opal film. And of course, there's the uh, Kimberbell mylar sheets there. And I believe there's um, a selection in there, Rachel. The, the selection is great. There's um, hot pinks, red, blue, green, silver. The, there's a lot of variety. And as Margaret said, it does reflect the color of the stitches. It's a really great product. We um, it's really popular and we use it a lot to stitch a whole bunch of things because of that light reflection with the thread. Now one of the other things that we can use is an organza for the, um, for the background of the lace. So the, you could hoop it if you wished or you could just float it on and once again just use your paintbrush to keep it in position. And 
that gives a lovely little sparkle to the um, flower as well. And the third one is tulle. Here we are. Very light and delicate. And of course, you know that tulle's often used in bridal when you're doing lace uh, for bridal uh, op uh, app apparel. Okay, so they are three things that you can use at the back of your flower and a variety of threads. You've got the soft light, you've got, oh, and did we mention metallics? No, Metalli we didn't, but in some thread. of the smaller gold, I have used yes, metallics. Yes, that one there I can see has got uh, the lovely gold thread in it. Now then, when it's finished, and I hear the machine's just saying I'm, I'm about to be finished, what do we do next? Well, here, here's one that Rachel did earlier. <laughs> so, as you can see, Hers has been cut, cut out, but that's but not what I no, do. No, Margaret, I was going <laughs> to say, that's not what you do because that's no, not, that's not know. what you and I um, had We're talked different. about. This is one of my favorite tips that I've learned from Margaret. And I'm the, allowed to do this on camera, to, I'm, okay. I'm holding this here so that she doesn't <laughs> do it too quickly, but this is one of the best tips I've had um, from Margaret right. and um, it's really, really useful, particularly oh, I don't know if you're frugal with your wash away. Yeah, fru I'm frugal with everything. Okay, so even even if you cut your design out, uh, you, you can still save all of your scraps of wash away, which are useful for making a starch, um, for if you want to starch some cotton, and that acts as a further stabilization for your project. I do a class where we make a clock, and I want the fabric to be you know nearly stand up stiff, and that's what the scraps of wash away are really good for. Now. Cutting it out is, is handy as well, but you may inadvertently snip your work. So for this one, I've got some warm water in this cup with a, a, a dot of washing up liquid. And um, I'm just going to, just checking that there's nothing uh, underneath me there. I'm just going to go around my flower like this. It's really handy if you find scissors hard to use as well. Um, I don't know whether I'd do this just because it's fun. <laughs> I think it's um, a really good way for saving your wash away. I store mine in a jar. What do you store your excess in? Oh, you know, it's a wine box. <laughs> it's an That's empty right. wine Margaret box. Margaret stores it in a wine box. <laughs> I've got two of them. One's for, one's for wash away and one's for... Um... I thought you were going to say one's for wine. <laughs> no, no, they're all empty. <laughs> that would be silly. One of the other. Um, See-through cutaway. Yes, I'm just, now here we are, just about ready. And the other thing that we use with this is, um, you, if you're at home, you would use a towel, right? But we're a echidna, so we have to use the handy dandy paper towels. Now, at this, thanks Rachel, at this point, I always put the hoop that way down because this is sticky, okay? So I'm just going to pop it down over there, out of the way. And here we've got um, the star, and I'm going to just pop it in that water. And it's go, it's obviously, it's going to dissolve the wash away very, very quickly. Now, if you leave it in the water for a long time, more and more stabilizer will come out. But I would recommend that you change the water a couple of times as well. Because I will just say that my stars that I've created here, if we are at the overhead, are actually quite firm. Mm. And that's because I didn't wash a lot of the wash away out. But Margaret, we talked about this at yeah. length. I can re-soak these yeah. again and um, they will soften. And probably softer is better for bee wings, yeah. maybe. So what I'm going to do is just place that on the towel and I'm going to pretend that it's a nice fluffy towel from home and I'm going to just pat it and just keep drying it off. The, if you leave too much stabilizer in and you leave it on a towel, and forget about it and leave it to dry. It will stick to the towel. So try and remove as much stabilizer as possible. So Rachel. So you're going to leave ready? that to dry for the rest of the, you would yes. normally, if you're at home, you'd leave that to dry for the rest yes. of the day? Yes, yep. yes. Great, okay. I'll pop that up to one side. So the next thing that we are creating is our freestanding three-dimensional um, rose flower. So again, you can download it. It's under demonstration one on uh, the web page. If you go onto there, you'll be able, when you get home, studio audience, um, or if you're at home, you can just click on there and download them now. Um, uh, the, this this is where you want me to swap places. This is where we it? swap places, see, so it's kind of, we're going to try and do this smoothly, but. I just said that um, 
<laughs> this is bees do dancing. Oh, that's and, right. Uh, I remember. <laughs> they, I was explaining, so I was explaining about the, all the dances that they do. And they do message dances and massage, massage. dances, which is, she's really interested in. I want in. to know more about that. The joy the dance, massages. a joy dance, a cleaning dance. And that's cleaning of their body, not the cleaning of the hive. But the most important dance is the waggle dance. And she said, oh, are you going to do a waggle dance? Well, it's not like that, I'm as imagining you think. That. No, 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 no. It's not but like no, a chicken it's dance. Not. No, so they're going to do they're going to do two semicircles and a diagonal so I we're going to you're going to let me go in front of you absolutely okay so I'm going to go around by here by the way it, I'm a bee she's the queen she's the queen bee <laughs> <laughs> and then go across the diagonal now the diagonal is the direction in which they will find the pollen supply and then mm -hmm. they're going to go around the other side and depending on the number of times that they go around in the circle and the, the speed that they go, they're telling the other bees where the pollen is, how far away, and the quality. And meanwhile, I get to be at the machine where Rachel wants me. So then I should be, if I was a bee, buzzing off to get the pollen, <laughs> yes. pollen, right, and bringing it back to the, is that how it works? Yes, yeah. definitely. Thanks, thanks, Margaret, for that um, very, very and useful that where information. Where they give each other a message to say, "Hey, I've come in loaded up with pollen. Can you now take it off me and store it?" Yes, and it's on my legs, right? And hexagons down here. Yes, absolutely. So the flower that we're making is made of organza. It uses pretty much the same products that the freestanding lace makes, except there's no stabilizer, and so this is the organza, if I can get an over, oh yeah, we've got an overhead shot. It's quite thin and fine, this is what we're using. What um, I really love about these designs, and they're from Lindy Goodall's uh, three-dimensional flower pack, mm -hmm. um, and she's very generously given us one to give to you guys, but what I love about it is that they're quite soft. You can see here that the flower is quite soft. There are half a dozen layers to creating this flower, and Margaret, there is hand stitching involved. Oh yes, I did hear that. I, I thought some people might like to do a little bit of hand stitching yeah. though. It's quite, it can be quite therapeutic. Yes. So these are what the um, parts or elements for this flower looks like. So uh, what I'm going to do is I will hoop up this next one and then we'll talk about construction because this does take seven minutes to stitch. So there are seven, six elements to the flower, but we have just prepared one earlier, which is not surprising. Um, I'm hooping two layers of organza here, and you can see it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just kind of, the salvages aren't together is what I mean by that. And then I have actually, like Margaret said, one layer of sticky here, but for this one, I'm going to add extra sticky tape underneath. Now that is so that the fabric is gripped at the same time and holds it taut just because we're not using stabilizer. Of course, if you are a bit nervous about stitching without using stabilizer, you can put wash away in, in which case you would do exactly what Margaret did before, which is um, stitch it out and then uh, use your paintbrush to get the element out of the hoop and then wash it out. But I've stitched a few of these. In fact, all the elements up here on the wall I have used to um, without the stabilizer. I think that's a really neat idea. Yeah. And something I would be doing. So I'm taking the sticky off. And that sticky, can you leave it on the hoop or does it have to be removed each time? No, I I've <coughs> figured out it's about ten. Uh, 10 hoopings it'll last for, but you'll see because it will get a little um, furry and, t and the tack won't be as strong. Gee, it's easier getting it on then. There we go. So you can see I've got all, all of those pieces, just moving my, those pieces stuck on. You made it look much easier, Margaret. Ah, oh, but you're working with um, very yes. fine fabric. Yes, it is, there, it is a you? sheer fabric yeah. and it is quite slippery. Yeah. So then I'm going to get my hoop and just make sure that my arrow's up, which is here, and start pressing. And like I did with Margaret, 
Margaret did, sorry. I did loosen it slightly and now I'm going to tight, tighten the screw and it's only ever a finger tighten, I never use a um, screwdriver and that is pretty good. So we're going to put this in the hoop, sorry, put the hoop in the machine, Margaret, trusty assistant, and this stitch out is seven, seven, minutes, minutes. seven minutes long, so while Margaret has that stitching, um, we will talk about these elements of this flower. So you can see what I really liked about this flower is that you can kind of see with the organza it starts to curl and the smallest piece, so this one, goes in the centre. So this is where your hand stitching comes in. You need to use your needle and thread and it's only really catching um, the bottom part of the flower. You just take your needle and you're really just pulling these together so that it starts to curl in. And it's like a little miniature satin stitch just here to create. Just press go again. Yep. Yeah. The bobbin thread looks like it's it's just fine. have a slight. I'm just going to cut that thread. So I'm just stitching here. I'm just holding these little bits together. So it's only two or three stitches. It's not really very much. And to be honest, I don't even really knot it off. So then I'll just cut this. Margaret's taken a small. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Mm. So then it's, you can see it's starting to curl in. And so then with each of the elements, so then there's one and then there's number two. Again, so you can see that this one will fit into here and we start to construct the flower. Mm -hmm. Have you got a... Do you want is that? It, is it stitching okay? Oh, it's no. stitching fine, yes. Um, there was just one thread needed a snip. Flynn, do you want to show some of the um, of this stitching out on the organza without the actual stabiliser? So you can see it's stitching beautifully. One thing that I didn't mention, but it's very, very important, is the presser foot height. So um, the, the presser foot should be skimming the top of the fabric without um, actually touching. If it's too high, you'll actually get what's called flagging and your, your fabric will pull up and you'll kind of hear a noise. It's almost like a, I think it's kind of like a thud. Um, but that is, uh, that shouldn't happen because you will uh, and break a needle. You'll probably get skip stitches, but there are a whole bunch of things that will happen if you Red snaps. Yeah, do have, have flagging. So those are some of the things that um, you should check if you, if you are getting thread snaps, as, as Margaret said, or if you are um, not happy with how it's stitching out. Those are some of the basics. So you're talking about things that can go wrong with your embroidery, and I know that you're just busy threading a needle, and I thought I would tell you about a couple of things that go wrong with bees. Great. That's um, what we need to know, Margaret. Yes. Now, a couple of diseases that are prevalent in Australia, there's American fowl brood. So brood are the eggs of the bees, and fowl meaning fowl. So this disease fouls up the little eggs. So if you've got no babies, you've got no bees. The second one is African hive beetle and they go in and they penetrate in the, um, the cells of the honey, they get into the bees and they defecate in there and it actually makes a mess. I asked my husband, so what does it actually do? He says, oh, it makes a really awful mess. And I saw it once and there was not a better way to describe it. I have got some horrible images in my head, but frothy, disgusting mess with dead bees in. Oh. So he, I mean, he had to, he had to destroy, he had to burn it. They were dead. And it was the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. Now that's African hive beetle. That's already in the country. The next one is, oh, there's oh, a question. There is a question. We have a question currently. Okay, so uh, Jean um, online would like to know where the organza came from. Weather? The organza, Jean, is in my stash. 
So I don't know if you have a fabric stash, but I know you're loving the colours, aren't you? Which is why I've chosen them for this, because they're perfect. But I have a stash, and like Margaret's stash, it could have some very, very old type of fabrics that I've just collected and gone, oh, I love this. So, yeah. But Op shops are a good place yeah. to look for things. Old yeah. scarves, if you're looking for oh, organza, yeah. Yeah. Um, start thinking outside the box. Look for you know old scarves and go into op shops and see what they've got available because they have really good um, organza. You can say that's kind of like a rainbow, really. Shot. Yeah, it's an shot. shot. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I hope that answers your questions. I can't send you anywhere, but maybe to my stash. <laughs> And I know you've got quite a bit, talking yeah. about a bit, needles in your stash. You've got lots of needles as well. I do. I do <laughs> so, have lots of needles. Um, the third but um, really most serious disease has not entered Australia yet. It's the Varroa mite. Now, towards the end of last year, there were concerns that it was in New South Wales. And if you heard the news, the beekeepers had to destroy oh, all of their bees. burning a lot of hives, weren't yes, they? Yes, yeah. that's right. Now, the Varroa mite is around the rest of the world. It is predicted that it actually will eventually come into... It's a mite. It's like a... Um, if you think of it like a flea on your body, but it's a blood-sucking flea. It, and they live on the bees and they kill the bees. Uh, and the, it's the male bees that they, that they stick on and they multiply. Now, that Varroa mite is going to decimate the beekeeping industry. and. So I've talked about three diseases that affect the industry, but there's another threat to the industry, and that is not enough beekeepers. And the average age of beekeepers is over 70. Um, and beekeeping is actually a hard physical job, which is why the frame that I brought in is a half frame, because my husband can no longer manage a box full of full frames. It's really too heavy for him now. So we need young, strong people to become beekeepers. You know, in your backyard, you don't have to be a commercial beekeeper. So um, we live, we're fortunate to live on a couple of acres and he's got about 22 hives. And you do have to be registered. And even if you go and buy the new flow hive that was invented in Australia um, a couple of years back, even if you have the flow hive, you still have to be a knowledgeable beekeeper, you still have got to look for your uh, beetles and the, the other diseases, you've got to check your bees. It's not as easy as just saying, there it is, bottom of the garden, I'll get a jar and fill it up with honey. It's, it, you can do that, but meanwhile, what, what is not shown is the fact that you do have to learn to be a beekeeper as well and learn about your bees, all right? So remember, knowledge is power and the bees need all the support that we can give them. Um, if we didn't have bees. I told you about the t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. They're a very I've, important part of our ecosystem. I've got an embroidery machine and I think every work t-shirt my husband has has got something embroidered. Um, I made him three one Christmas and one of them is just a circle of bees and it says, if we die, we're taking you with us. <laughs> there you are. So we need bees. How are you getting on there, Rachel? I am almost stitched of all my elements. <coughs> okay. Well, um, we have only got about 30, 30 seconds. seconds left. Let's see what the stitch count is. Have you guys, has anyone got any more questions? Just 100 stitches. Apart from... Okay, I so yep, for you at home, the question is, when you make the flowers, does it matter what colour organza? And the answer is no, and that's a great question because bees aren't picky about their colours, are they? As long as they've got pollen. So I can imagine the wreath all around here, just a, a whole bunch of different coloured flowers. So, you know, a big variety um, would be great. Some of the other flowers, for those of you who don't have an embroidery machine, you can make... Um, I call this the flannel flower, so that's actually part of the demonstration too. It's just using a sewing machine, but it's online on that demonstration one. So I've made a flannel flower. There's a template there for stitching that flower together and using Suffolk puffs in the middle to um, create the center. So go ahead and try that if you don't have an embroidery machine, but you have got options. So probably 
The more flowers I can have in the wreath, the better. I think it'll look magnificent. Well, you've got another one here. That's fantastic. How, how are you feeling about hand sewing, Margaret? Can you finish the last one? Yes, I certainly can. So this one is not the last one. So I'm just finishing joining these together. There's just one more you might mm -hmm. need to re-thread. Thank you. So you can see that it's stitched out with the circle in the centre. That's pretty much my um, alignment tool for all my other pieces to go on. So what I'm going to do, you, if you have um, a rhinestone applicator, which is a heated wand, or a, you've got a tool. Soldering so a, iron. A soldering iron. That's a much faster way to do this. But I keep this in the hoop, and I just use these really sharp scissors, because organza is quite fine. Yes, we've got another question for online. Tina wants to know why you have to sew each petal. Um, for this design, it's to create the layers. So to create the layers, there's six parts, which is each single petal. The uh, Lindy Goodall, who digitised it, has designed it, the petals um, in six sections, so there's the small to large. But can you put more than one in a hoop? That was what I was about to say. <laughs> Great money. So I've only done one hoop at a time, but if I was at home, I'd have them one big hoop in my organza and I'd stitch all six at once. I wouldn't stop, but just so that you can see what we're doing, we're just doing one, one at a time. So I'm just going to use my slightly curved scissors here and whiz around the outside. Margaret's busy stitching. Well, I was last. just, well, she said I was here to just share some interesting bee facts. Do you know that we export bees to America? Because no. America can't keep their bees. The bees die. Um, you've heard of American firewood. Uh, by the way, is that all you needed? No, it needs to tuck. It needs to be more dimensional, Margaret. So see how this is pulling together? So it needs to be more, maybe uh, three millimetres up All right. the side Got to you. pull it together. Well, that's a good question, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a really good so question. So yes, we export bees um, for their almond industry, right? And every year. So there are uh, people in Australia and their, uh, like their career, their job is to breed bees for export. And I believe they also send them to Canada as well. Um, we've got chickens. Who, have you got chickens, anybody? Yeah. Do they uh, sometimes fight and get torn wings or a torn neck where, where another hen has atta attacked it? When that happens, um, I get to play nurse <laughs> <laughs> and we get the honey out. So, and hang on. <laughs> so your We're not chickens <laughs> are injured and you get to play. Oh, you put the honey on the chickens. <laughs> So he holds, the, okay. he holds the chicken. I'm thinking the bees are fighting. No, no, no. No, the chickens have no. fought. No, the, chicken, the, chickens, the chickens are fighting. Mm -hmm. And um, so occasionally one might get a tear on its neck or something. And so um, we get some honey and I spread some honey on the wound because honey is uh, anti antibiotic. So it has medicinal qualities it has, is what you're saying. It has. And um, it's an anti-inflammatory as well. So it's... People like it and like to eat it because it's nice and sweet and it is a form of sugar. And if you put it in your tea or your coffee, that's exactly what you're getting. You're getting expensive sugar because you've actually destroyed all the benefits by heating it. So we were talking about how do you know when you've got real honey, pure honey, and not uh, any honey that's been uh, tampered with. Uh, you may have heard the news uh, sometime past. Now, Simon from Save the Bees. I'm finished there, if you want to just Thank snap you. that off. Do you want to take that? Simon from Save the Bees, you were saying that he, um, uh, what was he looking for? Oh, he was, he was looking at the Capilano, I shouldn't have said that. No. He was looking, he was looking at the honey industry and it, the effects that um, some imported honeys were having on the market and what they were like. Now, Everybody wants to know, is my honey pure? Has anything been added to it? <coughs> ha have people been adding sugar to it or water to it? And we'll get people who come to our house and say, you know, is anything added? And we'll say, no, it's pure honey. And you can always tell if it's pure if it candies, if it crystallizes. So it looks like gritty sugar in the bottom of your jar. 
Um, some people love that. Some people think there's something wrong with it, but it's actually a sign that it's pure honey. And there's two things you can do. One, you can melt it back to its liquid state by just putting it in a sunny spot or putting it in some water that's about 40 degrees. So you don't want to heat it anything uh, higher than that. Um, or the other thing is you could, uh, I was telling you how to make creamed honey. Yes. Um, tablespoon of candied honey in a food mixer. Then pour in some runny honey. Set your mixer to whiz away and the honey will change color and become a creamy color. And it, then you pop it in a jar and you keep it in the fridge and it, was, it will solidify. Take it out of the fridge and leave it out of the fridge and it will go back to runny. All right, so there's your great recipe for today, creamed honey. So we can make creamed honey yes. as well as um, yes. three-dimensional flowers. So I've cut the, um, the organza. It's a bit, it's, if I was at home, I wouldn't be as, I'm going to say rough but uh, I've cut the, the base out. And then I start layering. So here's one, here's two. And you can see how Margaret stitched this one up and I've left the needle in it because what I'm going to do is poke the needle down the, the centre, bring it to the bottom. But I'm going to start layering all my um, flowers so I can stitch them on. And so I do this and then I'll just tack them down. So it's not that much hand sewing, but there is, you do need to know that there's some. So then this one goes next, and I offset them. So you can see here, I'm just offsetting. And then number two, so this has got two petals, and just trying to make it look like a real flower. And this one will probably go that way. And then I'm going to take that needle that's down the bottom, I'm gonna poke it through all those layers and hopefully it'll be straight no that wasn't but stitch it in place this is probably the fiddliest part of creating this flower you just give it a pull and then two or three to hold it in place and I'm not doing too many because I have to stitch it on to the background here. So I'll be doing more stitching. So it's really um, just to hold the layers together. Could you use a glue, a glue gun? Um, I wouldn't because it'll be too hard for my, oh. for my wreath. Okay. Uh, if you're not able to uh, stitch them together, you can certainly send them to us cut out and flat. We can have a bit of a stitching session if we need to. And then I'm just going to go one more, Excuse and me? I'm not going to. Margaret loves hand stitching. I was thinking I might be coming in doing that, but you've got a question online. Oh, another online question. What is it? Tracy wants to know, how do you learn about being a beekeeper? There so are... actually, um, I can answer this question, Good. Margaret, because Good. Simon from yes. um, Be The Cure, if you, go, if you click on the Golden Bee Community Project on our website and go down to um, his information, and click through it'll take you to his website and there's a lot of information there about becoming a beekeeper um, particularly I think uh, he's based in Melbourne but they do have a lot of information about bees and beekeeping it's a very very um, very good thing to support in the bay side there's a bay there's a beekeepers club and it used to meet at Cleveland so that's High in School. Brisbane yeah. for those of you online because yeah. you're not obviously so the, all in the there bay could side. be there could be local clubs yes I think uh, Simon yes. does have that as yeah. well and find a beekeeper and go and ask them I'm yeah. sure they'll be happy to share their knowledge so there is my um, rose isn't it beautiful yes is that for me no this is for the bees Margaret this is for this is rose it is Mrs. Rose. <laughs> so let me grab, so I just want to show you yeah. the, uh, oops, there's that one there. Um, this is how they will come out. So obviously I'm just poking them on, but you can get the idea, right, of lots of different coloured flowers around the wreath. It's going to look lovely. The flannel flower, I think I had some other flowers here too. Uh, any of these? Oh yes, and there is also, um, we've got a few, mm -hmm. I have these. And here's another one. That will, so there's a, a class on how to, there's a, a video on how to make a bias flower as well. So we've got a whole variety 
of flowers to go on um, if you make them for me. So, obviously it's going to be full of flowers. For me, yes. I have another question. Yep. What's the um, objective for doing that? Like, is that going to be... Optimal? What am I going to what do with it? Do? Um, Promote. Yes, yeah, so I never thought about auctioning it, but it's a great idea. Maybe, maybe we can once it's finished. Usually we um, create something and then just hang it. But yeah, maybe we can. I don't know if you guys have all got ideas as to what we can do with this uh, art installation once it's completed. Um, yeah, let me know. I'd really, really, yeah, like to value your ideas. That's a, a great thought is to auction it and give the money to save the bees. Mm. Mm. So that's, have you got any more interesting I, facts, Margaret, before we close a, off for today? It's not a new fact, but I'm just going to uh, restate something. Uh, and the way that we can help uh, the bees is to plant flowers. And everybody's got to think about what flowers they're planting in the garden. And as I mentioned, daisy, oh, lavender and daisies, any kind of daisies are really good for the bees. I, I did have a little list, uh, grevillea, bottle brush, tea tree. So tea tree, um, these, it's manuka. And we, we bought quite a few uh, tea trees to plant on our property. So technically we can say that, you know, we've got some manuka honey. Yes. Tracy wants to know uh, if she can add a small pearl button or maybe something else to the middle of the flower. Absolutely you can. So I would rather it's stitched, not glued, because um, I'm going to have to hand stitch them onto the background. So I still need to be able to go in and out of the, the pearl button. Or obviously if it has the shank, I can um, do that sideways. So just when you're doing that or whatever you choose, think about how I'm going to be able to attach it to the wreath on the background. That's the only reason why these are kind of all naked, because it, yeah, they have to still be stitched. Oh, I thought you had another question. No. So finally, this is the and this is the honey. Yes. And um, this is what you would call bush honey. So it's not any special flavour. Um, we don't travel to farms to put the hives there. It's just what's local to our area, and that's good um, for a couple of reasons. But whenever you come, you can't guarantee that the flavour will be exactly the same because it depends on what's in flower at that particular time. But if you are an asthmatic, um, I'm trying to think what my son has. Um, when you sneeze a lot, when, you, when you're with the flowers, what's that? Hay fever. <clears throat> hay fever, thank you, not asthmatic. If you suffer from hay fever, what you should be doing is getting honey that's made in your local area because it will help protect you from your symptoms of hay fever. I just want to tell you that this is not medical advice. This is just experience that we've had <laughs> with our own no, children, no. right? <laughs> so. But my son does get hay fever. But I, he lives in Western Australia and he's not allowed to take any of his father's honey home. Not allowed in Western Australia. Right. So, start stitching everyone the idea of this collaboration is to inspire you to go home and start making some things maybe try something new if you don't have an embroidery machine you do have the options to create these ones by hand i think they're lovely i shouldn't say hand We're using a sewing machine to to put them together so i think that's all we've got for today stay tuned for next month where we are bodybuilding with hexagons i call it bodybuilding um and I look forward, thank you, Margaret, so much for all your bee tips and uh, knowledge. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you next month. Can I ask one last oh, question? One last question please, for Margaret. Please. So if I like making flowers, but I've got different designs, can I just make my own design if it's about the same Absolutely size? Absolutely, you can. You can make any flowers, whatever you like. Um, and in fact, even freestanding lace. If you've got your own designs, feel free to use those and send them in to me. They will be added to um, the art installation. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. See you, everyone. Thanks very much.